So in my experience and from what I have witnessed working with patients and of course friends who are moving through the process of awakening to themselves, there is a pull. It's, it's this pull that becomes stronger than the push, right? So if you're pushing away the things you don't like about your life, the things you're complaining about, the things that are not satisfying you, that's important, right? To understand what's not working, but then there needs to be somewhere you're being pulled towards and that pull becomes irresistibly strong so that you can no longer live in your false life as your illusory self. You just can't. And that little teeny voice inside is constantly whispering to you to pay attention and to see these elements of your self, including the parts of yourself that you decided you didn't want to look at the parts of yourself that are shameful or lazy or incompetent or, you know, rife with dark emotions like grief or rage. These sort of soft whispers are pulling your attention towards these parts of yourself through an examination of the habits, many of which are no longer working, right? No longer serving the habits that really worked for a time and now are no longer working. So if we can understand that all we have to do is turn towards that part of ourself, right? And, and to begin to fundamentally accept it and ultimately embrace it, that's where um, we begin to move towards this experience of personal reclamation, of soul retrieval, and of a kind of wholeness that we were born into. And we've spent our entire lives, you know, struggling to re-experience. So I like to use the analogy of, you know, our, our darker parts, our shadow selves being kind of this tantruming toddler. And you can lock her in a room, you know, you can bolt the door, you can turn the music on really loud and then arrange, you know, the furniture and clean the house. But when you look around, you're going to wonder why it just never quite feels like home. And it's because there's a toddler screaming at the top of her lungs in the room you locked her in. Right. So, so that's kind of what it is to live without ultimately acknowledging or dealing with these aspects of our personhood, right? You can manage the symptoms that arise from your wound, right? You, you can try to paper them over and cover them up, but ultimately you still have to acknowledge that they're there if you want peace. And if you want to feel like your, your whole self, you have to turn towards them and turning towards them can be as simple as generating an experience within yourself of curiosity, of turning towards that emotion as if it was your child self, right? Turning towards that, that strong feeling and just saying, wow, it's like really, really intense what you're dealing with. I'm so sorry. You know, it seems like you've been dealing with that for a really long time and kind of, you know, giving that, that child self like a hug, like how would you sue the little kid? Right. You wouldn't lock them in a room. I know you wouldn't, right. You would, you would sit with them, learn what's going on, try to soothe them, try to reflect to them that you, you see what's happening because for most of us that didn't happen in our childhoods, we are now compensated for that deficiency. And that compensation and, and the, the pattern of compensation is what we call our personality. So we become very identified with that. And that's probably why almost every time my patients, you know, who are moving through this transformational process say, I just don't even know who I am. That's a part of it. That confusion is a part of becoming who you really are. And it's such a breathtaking process if you just say yes to it.